on this episode, we begin with cringe. Ooh. <laughs> and that causes a little bit of a ooh. We transition to pure joy. I'm having too much fun. This is this should be this should be illegal to have this much fun. And we end with a celebration. Merry Christmas everybody. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Christian from AZDS Academy. Welcome to another episode of the Advanced Schmap Tutorial. Now, today we are still working on the pattern editor or the pattern system. And this is cool. Have you seen what we have? I mean, we haven't saved, I should save this. Um, so we have, we have the ability to do like these spreads right now, right? So it, this is how usually it looks like, but now we can be like, okay, let me create 10 bullets and then this looks like this now, right? So we can create these beautiful, beautiful spreads. Uh, create, create spreads like this. This is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Excellent. And now something, because I haven't discussed this in a second um, uh, previously, but you know, when you have like little spread like this, let me, maybe like this, right? So there's like li little spread now. Let's export this. Uh, we can create a spread of spreads. So we can reference that spread and then, you know, make a spread of spreads as we already discussed at the beginning where we are planning, you know, what kind of features we want to have, right? We can be like, ooh, something like this, you know, anything is possible, you know? This looks like a nice little bullet pattern where you can, we have like a safe spot, right? Um, so there's a lot of things possible now. We can combine these different pattern modifiers on top of each other, stack them and so forth. And it, it's only like this very simple thing. It just you know, duplicates the bullets and adds a little bit to the angle. Cool, huh? There's some things that we've written down that we wanted to do. But maybe before we get into the, like, the mirroring and so forth, how about how about we deal with this rapid fire thing? This, this, we haven't been putting this off for a while and we kind of have to address the elephant in the room, right? And the elephant in the room is right now when we're creating a pattern, that pattern gets created immediately. Like the bullets are getting created immediately and immediately fly out, which is great. If you want to have a rapid fire thing, if you want to have a rapid fire thing, that means that when you create the bullet, the bullet doesn't immediately appear. Because, okay, there's like, if you do rapid fire, there's basically two ways of, of doing this. One is you create all of the bullets that you are gonna be firing at one point and just shoot them out in a delayed kind of fashion. That's one way. The other way is you create like a little object that has a built-in timer that spawns the bullets on a timer, like a spawner, a bullet spawner. I want to use this first thing. I want to have like one event that creates all of the bullets and the bullets will have like a built-in timer that ticks down and then they appear. Kind of like the way we have this in, in the particle effects. When we create the explosion, we create all of the particles of the explosion at once. And then some of the particles in the explosion appear a little bit later. Uh, so they have like a wait timer. Uh, so basically what I want to do is so I want to do this. I want to create like a wait timer for each individual bullet. And that wait timer will make the bullet appear later. That causes some problem though, because that means we need to have like a queue of bullets, right? We wanna, we're not going to create the bullets immediately on the screen. We put them like in a queue. Uh, where in, the, in that queue, the bullets are waiting to get spawned. And this queue is not a global queue where it's like the bullets are everywhere. Now, all of the bullets that were ever fired by all of the enemies are going to put into one big queue. Instead, what we need is each individual enemy has to have its own little tiny queue. Ooh. <laughs> and that causes a little bit of a ooh. <laughs> that doesn't feel so great. But yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, so, um, so when we create like the patch shoot N, right? Instead of just immediately creating all of the bullets and dumping them onto the bull array, what we instead have to do is we want to add them to the enemy queue of that enemy. And then there's like a separate function that goes to the queue and fires out all the bullets. A little bit of a complicated route that is not quite as intuitive as 
it's not what we th we thought we would get into when we started this these things, but you know that's the way it goes. Um, first of all, when I create an enemy, where do I create an enemy? Yeah, so this is n spur, right? Uh, and I think here I need to do a bull queue. Bulk. So this is the queue of the, of the of the, the that the enemies are being dumped, uh, the bullets are being dumped into. Uh, so let's implement the queue first without any kind of delay stuff. We'll just like put the bullets in the queue and then do the queue. Um, so here we're adding the bullets to the enemy bull queue. So n dot bull queue. And then we're going to have a function called function do bull queue. Actually, no, this is going to be part of the enemy. Do, do bulls make pat? Do we have an enemy do function? We don't have an enemy function. Well, okay, let's do a function for this. Function do bull queue. Uh, n. Then we're going to go for b in all n dot bull queue do. And then, um, okay, so here uh, we're gonna pay attention to the timer, but for now we're just gonna go like uh, add bulls b, delete n dot bull q. Right? We, we just like whatever is in the queue, which is gonna get dumped immediately onto the screen. Uh, and then an update function. Uh, 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 yeah, after we do the patch shoot, we're gonna do a bull queue on our one enemy that we have. Uh, and spur, I guess is the, is the thing. Like this. And then we're gonna do the bullets, right? So, ooh. That is not what I expected. Why, why is it so, so freaking fast? <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> Why is it so fast? <laughs> oh, there we go. We de never delete the bullets. Okay. <laughs> what a weird bug. How are, is, is anyone supposed to figure this out? Okay. Right, so right now nothing changes. We just like made it a more complicated version of what we already had. But now, now we can do the rapid fire. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna do it how I did it initially because there's there's gonna be an end game for this. But for now, let's go wrap, wrap, uh, rapid, <laughs> rapid. We're gonna create a new type of pattern called rapid. We're gonna have a source. We have a number, and we're gonna have like a, a time, tim, time, um, or or gap or the delay spacing. Uh, let's go. Let's just call it time. Whatever. Um, and then we, this is, um, this is going to be the UI's part of it. And then we're going to create here when we're creating a, an empty rapid. Ra rapid. Um, it's going to be rapid. Um, it's going to be source, um, number and the delay. And delay is going to be whatever two. Okay, um, and here where we're now creating the bullets, we're gonna create a, a similar effect than that we had with the spread, except it's gonna be now the, the rapid fire delay, right? So like something like this, rapid. Uh, again, we're gonna create multiple copies of the original bullet, we're gonna, of original pattern. We're gonna keep the angle This is stuff we don't need. Uh, yeah, we're gonna keep the angle, uh, but uh, we're gonna go then through all of the bullets, and we're gonna go like p dot weight uh, plus plus equals um, whatever is in entry number four, right? We there is gonna be like a weight property to each prop each bullet. And I'm gonna 
when we create a new bullet, we're going to add that weight property. And by default, it's going to be zero, but some bullets will have some delay happening. And then we're going to, if, if the delay is happening, then we're going to add something to the weight. Uh, my pet four multiplied by i minus one. Like this. Okay. Um, now I'm going to save this. Uh, and there's one more thing. I want now our bull queue to actually um, respect, the, <laughs> respect the wait timer. Uh, where is it? Now where is it? Uh, 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 uh. Pets. Yeah, it's here. So when we're going through the queue, we're going to go like um, if b dot weight is smaller or equals zero, then we're going to do this. Else b dot weight minus equal one. So this is going to be the, the uh, bullets waiting in the queue for get to for them to get fired, right? I'm going to save this. I'm going to run this. So this is spread, right? That's good. And now we're going to create a rap rapid. I'm going to create five bullets. <laughs> yes, 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 excellent. Ah, oh, yes, oh, this pleases me greatly. Okay, um, let we, let's let's play around with the spacing now. Ooh, yeah, yeah. See now, if you do twenty, then you get your your rapid fire thing, right? Let's let's make it fifteen. But you already can tell that there's a bit of a problem. Uh, the bullets are being spawned where the enemy no longer is. The, the cross is where our enemy is supposed to be, right? But then when the, when the enemy is moving, the bullets are spawned somewhere else. That's not good. Uh, so what we, what we need to do is actually all this stuff here. That is actually something that we need to do when the, um, when the bull queue is being processed, right? So for example here. Right? So when the weight is over, then we're going to set the bullet position to the enemy position. And then we're going to calculate maybe the angle. Yeah. The angle we could calculate earlier, technically. But um, I want to kind of do this when they are being spawned, because um, that's potentially like, like if we, can, we spawn a lot of bullets at one point that are actually going to appear over a longer period of time. That's going to be a lot of calculations for sine and cosine. So it's better maybe to, to do this when we are spawning them. I uh, should have saved this. Spurred already, uh, uh, already reconsidering my... Oh no, not, not spread. Rapid. Um, five. Let's go ten. So now we can see the bullets are uh, being spawned where the enemy is. This is what we wanted. Now, uh, you can see that this is a bit of a problem that we're having here. And that's something that uh, we kind of have to think about a little bit. So the problem is now the bullets are being um, are aimed. But you can see they're not re-aiming, so to speak, right? So they are only the first bullet actually hits the, the player. The subsequent bullets are not hitting the player. So this is a bit of an issue here. Uh, I don't know how best to solve this. We could obviously um, calculate, right? We could calculate the the the, uh, the angle of the bullets, like the re we could re-aim. We could do this here when we're spawning the bullets. But the problem is, if we do that, then all of the spread gets kind of eradicated, like all of the spread functions that we create. Like if there's bullets that are aimed in one direction, then there's neighboring bullets as well. Then um, all of the neighboring bullets gets collapsed into just being like fired straight at the at the player. Uh, so we might have to do uh, some tinkering on the brain level to make this possible, to make like a rapid fire that re-aims re at, the, at the enemy. Right now, this, this rapid fire thing is actually more useful for, for other types of effects, I think. Uh, something that we haven't done yet, and that might be fun, is to do like a rapid 
um, to actually reference the spread that we had. That would be fun. Let's let's like ten, ten spreads. <laughs> okay, maybe a little bit too harsh. Let's go. Let's go a bit of a more time time delay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can already tell this this is a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, this 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 creates a lot of beautiful effects. Uh, and now we can go back to the spread and we can make it even the bigger bullets. Let's make 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 that work. Oh yes. <laughs> I don't know. It it's it's somehow like creating lots of little and moving things like with particle effects. It's kind of like so fun to do. Um, also, we have to consider like the, uh, right now all of the bullets are uh, aimed at, at the player. Um, we, we might actually add some some functionality to, to switch between aimed bullets and and um, static bullets. Maybe let's let's do that for a sec here. So how do we do this? So if we're gonna go if do keys and yeah, this is keys, right? Um, yeah, let's do it in update function. So we're gonna go if key equals one then mm, let's let's put like a fire function uh, like a function here that is called something like fire ang and by default it's minus 99 so if key is equals one then if fire ang equals mm, minus 99 then fire ang equals zero, else fire ink equals 1999. And then here we're doing the fire ink thing, right? So now we're firing at the at the player and if we press one, we are just firing straight. That gives us more of a like a difference between how it feels like when we are doing aim shots versus how it feels like when we're doing the straight shots. Uh, because now when we do the spur, um, the uh, uh, rapid and reference one. See, this doesn't feel as jarring anymore uh, when it's just like fired straight down. You can already tell that this is already like a really nice pattern to to be avoiding here. Just like the, just doing a bit of a you know unaimed shots and an enemy is moving around and just lays down some fire. This is already fun. This is already good. This is already good, good schmuffing fun that we can create here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yes. Um, so we kind of like have the fire, rapid fire pattern figured out. So this means that we already have the um, rapid fire. Let's go down the list. We kind of already have spread, but there is a problem that with the spread that I want to maybe address. Um, there's also another thing that I have here called the burst. And maybe let's let's do the burst. Maybe maybe that's gonna be a cool thing. Let's just like just forge forward, and then we're gonna do a bit of a consolidation where we put things together that, that belong together. Um, okay, so I want to have maybe something like a you know like a shotgun type blast of a of a shot, right? How are we going to do this? Well, we're gonna do another modifier um, that will just add random randomness to different properties that we have, maybe to the angle, maybe to the delay, you know, you don't know. So let's try that. So we're gonna create this. And we're gonna call this burst. Burst. Uh, burst will, the first is gonna be the reference, the source um, pattern we're referencing. The second is gonna be the um, number of bullets that we're gonna create. And then we're gonna add maybe how much we are like the range uh, of the angle and let's say the range of the delay, right? So with the angle, let's, let's say 0 0.5 and with a time, let's say five. Let's just try that. Now let's go to the UI and, and make it so that the UI does it as well. Burst. So uh, source, number, angle, time. 
Okay, and now let's implement this in our pattern editor. So this is gonna be a bit tricker. That's a bit tricker. It's tricky, 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 tricky. All right, so this is gonna be burst. Um, we definitely want to create copies. We're going to create copies here. Right, 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 right. Now, already with a pang, we kind of want to do the same thing as we did here, where we're adding something, right? We're adding something to the, to the pang. And that thing that we're adding is going to be, it's going to be the four, but it's going to be in a random number. Uh, plus R&D, let's just do it like a, Silly, silly solution for this. Let's just do a plus my pet four. And then we're gonna go through all of these and then we are gonna add, for each bullet we create, we're gonna shift the speed a little bit. Uh, not the speed, the, the, the delay. The question is whether we want to shift the delay for all of the bullets of the source pattern by the same amount or if we wanna, each bullet will be different a little bit. Um, I don't think it does. It matters that much for most uh, intents of purposes. But you know, let's let's for now let's do like a local uh, R and D R and D W equals R and D um, my pet four, uh, and it's gonna be. Integer, right? We need to no, not integer. Was it is floor? Um, because um, this is the wait timer, and that should work with integer numbers. And then we're gonna go to the pattern, and then we're gonna add this random number that we generated there. Okay. By the way, we're gonna we're gonna consolidate this later a lot. For now, I just want to uh, create like this little burst thing. Let's let's see how that works. Uh, all right. So this is the spread. Let's do, let's just create a, a simple burst. Burst. Um, so right now, ooh, already, it's going in random directions. I like it. <laughs> um, yeah, that makes sense because we are okay. Let me let me create like ten of those. Yeah, this is this is now a nice little random pattern. Now the angle is a little bit crazy. Um, if you want to have like shotgun blast, we you have like this, but the time that like, doesn't seem to be. You're not seem to, seem to be doing anything with the time, which is weird, right? What happened there? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we used this, the wrong entry. We used entry number four. It should be entry number five. Let's try that. Uh, burst. Um, and let's do it ten. Okay, now you can see that some of them are appearing later. Uh, let's uh, narrow it down a little bit. Yes. Uh, let's do more as time of a time spread. Wow, takes a takes quite. I want to have like maybe like this kind of like more of an elongated um, burst, and you can tell that this is this is kind of difficult to achieve. Uh, this is kind of tough to, to make. Oh, oh. Uh, maybe this is now elongated. If, if I narrow down the cone, basically, I, I will get a more elongated thing. But it's, it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough to get like this. This And of course, now this is also, also highly dependent on the speed uh, of the trajectory of the enemy, right? Let's switch it to like this. Yeah, it looks a bit weird. It looks a bit weird. We need to, we need to add a new property that we can mess around with. And I already, I already, I, I dropped, I dropped, I dropped the secret already. I, I, I misspoke at some point, and you probably already know where this is going. So we can modify the angle of a bullet. We can modify the timing of the bullet when it appears. We also need to want to modify the speed of the bullet, obviously. And that's also a, a good thing to add to the spread. So some bullets are coming out a little bit faster and some bullets are coming a little bit slower, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, for the for the spread, for the burst, I mean. So um, angle, let's add a new one in here called speed. And then when we create a new one, 
for the burst. Um, let's let's put 0 0.5 on the speed. And the speed is highly sensitive, I think. Um, and then when we apply this, mm -hmm. so let's do like a, a random S for speed, and then then we're gonna dump. Uh, the speed in there, right? So here we're gonna go p dot weight, p dot spd plus equals random speed. Okay, let's try that. I wonder if this will work. Oh, I haven't. Good thing I haven't saved burst. Okay, let's let's just see what happens. Okay, let's me maybe create ten. Okay, let's just make angle zero. So they are being fired in the same direction and with no time skipping. So it's just like the speed variance. And we can see nothing, nothing changes. Okay, <laughs> never mind. A lot of things change. Holy crap. Oh, did I did I do uh, I did a floor, right? I think on this. Um let me let me uh export. I did a floor. And we need for the speed, we don't need the floor because comma values for speed are uh, point values. People, people said I said it's always comma values and they, they are uncomfortable with that uh, point values for those. This is nice, huh? This is a nice little laser kind of type. <laughs> um, let's do a yeah, yeah. Isn't, isn't that? Is, <laughs> and now we can add a little bit of an angle, you know. Phew. <laughs> now that's a shotgun. That's a shotgun, baby. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> Isn't that a cool burst that, like, if you shoot this at somebody, you're just like, whoa. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. This is this should be this should be illegal to have this much fun. <laughs> um, okay, something I noticed. Okay, so I set it to like um, fire it straight down. You can see the bullets are always going to clockwise. They're spreading out clockwise. I want them to spread in both directions though. And for this, I want to set up a little bit of a helper function. I'm gonna keep it all in, the, in this pads uh, uh, tab. So later on, we can copy this to our main program. We call it, we're going to call this function, we're going to call this spread. Like this. And this will just going to be a little wrapper because we're going to use this quite often, I think. And it's a bit awkward to always recreate that little function. So we're going to create like a little helper function that will basically return random two minus one and then we're gonna multiply it by the value. What the problem that we're having right now with the with the spreads is that you know we have our little angle and then we have an angle that shows in this direction, right? And when we add a random number, that's always gonna be adding positive. So all of, all of these will be going in this direction, right? So that's why all the, all the bullets are in this cone. Um, because we're always adding like this is zero and then you know this is like 0 0.1 if we wanted to go in this other direction as well that's going to be this other direction here then we also have to go, make it go to 0 point minus 0 0.1 you know uh, but it never does that because we always add a positive number to our angle so we need to create a, a randomizer function that sometimes creates positive values sometimes creates negative values equally spread um, and the way I did it is I created, uh, I, when we do a, like an R&D one, right? When you do like an R&D one, that gives us values between zero and one. This is the problem, right? But we kind of want to maybe have a function that creates, oh, let, me, let, me, let me use a different color. This thing will create functions between zero and one. Uh, th there's going to be like random numbers between zero and one, but maybe you want to have like a, a randomizer function that creates a f uh, entries between uh, minus one and one. Uh, and for that, we we the 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 formula is random two minus one, because the random two is going to be creating 
the random tool part, this part, will create um, entries between zero and two. That will be just random numbers between zero and two. So our total range of values is two. And then we're gonna shift that entire range in this direction, in this direction. And that does, that's what the, what the minus one does. And that what it does is it, the middle is gonna be zero and this is gonna be minus one and this is gonna be one. <laughs> I know it's a huge chaos, but basically we're going to recreate this part here. That's what we wanted. We're going to create this part. And then once we have this, we can multiply it by the value of the spread that you actually want to have. And so like if you do, so if you want to do like a spread of two, right? So that will um, return random values between minus two and two. If you want a spread of three, that will create minus values, uh, values between minus three and positive three. So we will get this even spread in both directions. Um, and so when we apply this to our burst, instead of the random, we're gonna do a spread. Did I save this? Oh, yeah, I did save this. Okay, so let's let's do a, the speed to zero, but now the angle is to 0 0.1. And then let's set it to firing downwards always. So you can see now we're firing equally in both directions, equally in both directions. That's what we wanted. We want to have like this little, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> What's underneath the Christmas tree? Bullets. Yeah, so now we're going in both directions. And we can uh, see, we can, we can, can we make it more narrow? Oh, that wasn't more narrow. This is more narrow. Yeah, it's more narrow, a little bit wider. Yeah, and even wider still. Yeah, see, nice little even spread. Cool. I'm actually thinking of maybe doing this for the bullets as well. But nah. I think bullets should always get get faster. Like we should always have like the because the problem is like uh, there is a danger with the bullets that we're gonna get negative, like it flips over to the negative side and, or reaches zero, and that will be bad. Um, so, for example, when you have bullet speed two, right? <sighs> let's make the angle. So now we have like a little shotgun. Let's let's go zero point five. So now we have like our shotgun. This is great because some of the bullets are really, really fast. But the base bullet speed is one. And so if we make a spread of two, then that means some bullets might get negative. We can actually showcase this here with the speed. Let's do a spread here. See, some of the bullets are now <laughs> Now they're actually uh, never dis disappearing anymore. And then if we put it two now some of the bullets are moving backwards you know which is cool but we can achieve, achieve the same effect like this is a very special effect that we can achieve differently as well and i think for the so i think for the bullets i think random uh, for the speed random is the better choice all right so that's the burst feature a very very useful feature the burst modifier <laughs> isn't that great let's do a bit of an angle spread here Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, angle, speed, and timing. That's all we want from our bullets, right? And we applied it to our burst thing. But our spread can only modify the angle, right? What if we could modify the other things as well? Hmm? That is something that comes up in a doggy zone. That's right, doggy zone. We have the burst, we have finished the burst, we still have the spread, and we actually can do the spread of spreads already. Yeah, we can totally do the spread of spreads. I'm gonna leave them around because we're still tinkering with the spread. Now the turning rapid fire, can we do that already? Can we do the turning rapid fire? No, we cannot, and actually that would be a good thing to uh, tackle in the doggy zone. So, as I said, the burst modifier that we just created, that uh, randomizes the speed, randomizes the angle and randomizes the timing. But we also have the spread modifier and that only spreads out the angle. And then we have like a separate modifier that spreads out the timing. What if we consolidate already the rapid fire and the spread modifier to become one? So we have like a spread modifier that spreads out the different values of a bullet. So it spreads out the angle and it spreads out the timing and 
that's something that we cannot even do yet, spreads out the speed. So I want you to work on our new super spread modifier that uh, combines the rapid fire and the spread modifier into one. So the same um, logic that we applied to, to the spread of the angle where we create copies and each copy has more of an angle deflection from the original. Um, we apply that same logic to the timing, which we already kind of did, but we just kind of combine this into one modifier. And we add a third thing that we modify, which is uh, changing the speed. So each subsequent copy will be get even faster or even, even slower, like this. That is something we're going to tackle in the next episode, and that is going to be the, the goal for the doggy zone. Yes, and we are coming to the last part of each episode where I say a big thank you, huge shout out to the people who are making the show possible, who are making it possible that I spend a lot of time on these very, very specific topics. Thank you so much for supporting me on coffee.com slash lazydevs. And I want to share with you another beautiful thing that I've seen on a Discord, people working on beautiful shmups. This is a longtime supporter, Squidlight, still chugging along at his, his beautiful little shmup project that he created there. And he recently shared something that I found really, really cool, which is this boss fight here right there. So this is like... A I love this, it's so cute. This little alien sitting inside a little spaceship and uh, it has like a multi-stage, it is a multi-stage boss fight where the boss fight gets like these weird wings or I don't know, cooling arrays, right? And they fold out and as the boss fight progresses, you know, the boss falls out even more, transforms and so forth. I love it. I love the little alien sitting in the cockpit. I love how it transforms. This seems like an epic boss fight and I'm looking forward to how this game comes together. Well done, Squidlight. I am rooting for you. Yes, yes, yes. So as you can see, our bullet system is getting powerful by the seconds. I already see bullets that I want to actually have already in the game. I want to try, you know, fighting them. I want to try avoiding them. But it will become even more powerful on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.